Oh boy, I'm 18, finally old enough to vote. Hmm. I think I'll go with... Oh. Oh. You need to understand the issues better. Let me introduce you to the political brands. You mean parties? <laughs> uh. As a Democrat, my brand words are equality, freedom, and fairness. As a Republican, my brand words are equality, freedom, and fairness. Well, what do you stand for? Smaller government for rich people, Christianity, and bigger guns. Bigger government for everyone, Christianity, and slightly smaller, bigger guns. Okay. Um, let's talk about the issues. Great. Fun. Okay, first, I have a lot of student loan debt. Can either of you help me out with that? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in personal responsibility. I mean, I didn't when I made it financially viable for a bank to loan you $300,000 for a poetry degree. But let's focus on the now. I'm here to help. I'll create a committee with a series of subcommittees to analyze the problem. If that's okay with the Republicans. It isn't. Well, you're screwed, buddy. But, okay, what about war? Can we stop war? <laughs> War is awesome! War is terrible. Pussy. War is awesome! Wait, what about gay rights? Which one of you is in favor of gay rights? I believe in traditional family. I am strongly in favor of lip service. Okay, so there's really no significant difference there. Whoa, we are completely different. The Republicans all want you to live in a Mad Max-like apocalypse future where it's every man for himself. That was a good movie. The Democrats want to take all of your money and spend it on tearing down nativity scenes. We only did that once. I'm not feeling either one of you. What about me? Hey, who are you? Well, I'm a third party member. Party? <laughs> Don't you mean brand? No. Nah. We're allowed to say what we think because we have no chance of winning. Well, why not? Watch this. Can I get on one of your ballots? You better back up, Mr. Values. Just walk away slowly. Nobody wants a hero. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, enjoy voting. Mr. Mr. President, 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 one question. Please, right over here. Right over here, Mr. President. All right, people, settle. No doubt you have questions about what my opponents are calling a drunken rant on national television, but which I call an impassioned plea for greater patriotism. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President. Uh, JP. Question. When you said drunk driving into the building and running over several children was, uh, and I quote, totally fucking awesome, did you now, mean see, that- this is exactly what I'm talking about. That quote is taken way out of context. I was making a point about how this nation has a problem with alcohol. It's awesome in the sense that it's so bad, it is a source of awe. So bad that it affects even the president of these United States, who rose to that office from humble beginnings, daring to hope that the American dream was still alive. Uh... It was a symbol. I was breaking down barriers of children to show how we should break down barriers for children. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President please. John. Mr. President. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, when you first stepped up to the podium, you said, and I quote, all the bitches in Congress can suck my dick. Oh. Okay. Clearly, you're in the tank for my opponents. That quote is a million miles from context. First off, bitch is a term for dogs. Dogs like Old Yeller and Lassie. Should we just kill Lassie? Should we chop off Lassie's head and dance on her quivering torso? Okay, but the suck my dick part... Are we all anti-sex now? Did the 60s mean nothing? Yes, I was talking about sex. I favor Americans having pleasurable sexual experiences. Is that so wrong? 
Your phrasing was taken as a derogatory I can't worry about all the special interests in Washington who spin everything I say. I make one joke and suddenly it's a sex thing. You just said it was a sex thing. What was my quote exactly? Quote, yes, I was talking about sex. Oh, and you just assumed that that sentence related to the preceding question and the sentences before and after it. Yes? How journalism has fallen in this country. It's press 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 Mark. What about your five minute rant about killing Chinese people? Whoa, hey, I'm gonna need a specific quote if you're gonna make accusations like that. You yelled, quote, kill the Chinese over and over for five minutes while banging your shoe on a podium. Yeah. Kill the Chinese means we have to stop seeing our brothers and sisters as minorities. We need to tear walls down, not build them up. We need to move forward, not backward. If your question is, do I stand for freedom and togetherness, what? I cannot help but say yes. My question was actually, why were you yelling kill the Chinese over and over while banging your shoe on a podium? That shoe was taken out of context. It was in my hand, so it's a glove. And plenty of people wear gloves. Heck, I'm putting some on right now. On the way out of the building, you felt up the vice president's wife. Oh! Oh! Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, just one quick question. Zach. Earlier today, you shot a reporter at a press conference. Is that legal? Oh, so now the president stands accused of murder. How standards have fallen. You really ought to have some smoking guns before you make a statement like that, son. There's a smoking gun in your hand? A smoking gun. I said smoking guns. Anyway, that bullet was taken out of context. There are bullets on the shelves of hard-working, patriotic American stores across this nation. And no one has a problem with that. But when the president takes one of those bullets and puts it in someone's body, well, suddenly it's a big freaking deal. It's a violation of basic civil rights. Wait, really? Shit. Well, you know, the future is unpredictable, so... <laughs> What are you doing? My people would like to be taken out of the friend zone. We would like to talk about it without preconditions. By my people, do you mean you? Me and my roommate who would like me to move out, yes. Ben, look, I put you in the special friendship zone due to your erratic behavior. There were environmental concerns. I shower more now. There were women's rights issues. I don't try to make sex with me degrading. It always just sort of ends up that way. There was that time you threatened to wipe out the Zionist menace. Maybe I was drunk. I don't know. What if I brought in my roommate as an impartial negotiator? She's not impartial! She thinks I ate her pet duck. Because you did. Which is why she thinks it. Jesse? Ben? I think that we should bring the relationship to a unified state. I think we need a two-state solution. Fascist swung! Uh, what? Sorry, sorry. You know, I think it would only be fair if we brought in my friend James to help mediate. He killed my gerbil! First of all, starvation killed your gerbil. Yeah! Secondly, I'm very sorry I killed your gerbil. Yeah. Now, I come here to propose a lifting of the relationship sanctions on Ben here. We propose, as an initial step, ending the sex sanction. What? No, no, no. End the love sanction first. Unless... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I want to do love first. What? Yeah, you know, love. Uh, uh, holding hands, long, mirthful gazes. Not ringing a bell. I propose a sanction on not telling Ben to fuck right off. I don't know if we need any more sanctions. Are you actually into him? Well, what if we send inspectors to make sure he's endeavoring to stop his needless unemployment program? Okay, so we're gonna push for condom-free sex and no observation of her birthday. What? No, are you even listening to me? I want to marry her. What? Marry, marriage. 
I feel like you're just making up words today. <sighs> we propose thrice weekly investigations at the Sovereign Apartment of Ben. I propose a one-state solution. Ben and Fee will legally bind their possessions together. Thus, Ben will live in a constant state of fear and invigilation. Oh my god. Ben? Are you proposing? I'm sorry I kicked you out. I'm sorry I ignored you for six months when Diablo 3 came out. Yeah, you should feel bad about that. I do. So you gonna bang, or...? With you? Oh yeah, maybe. I, I have really low self-esteem. Come with me. I sanction eye contact. I sanction kissing on the mouth. Ugh, well, obviously. You know what, Gog? Mm. I, I'm just worried about this generation. They, in the old days, people were better. I'm worried it's all downhill from here. Did you know they don't even believe Biggest Rock is Best Rock? But, but Biggest Rock is Best Rock. I know! I know! Frankly, it seems obvious to me. You know, I heard they have heterosexual sex for pleasure. <sighs> I know! I know! Sex is for procreation. For pleasure, you enjoy the gentle caresses of a teenage apprentice with, with no, no hair upon his chin. chin. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, here's my stupid son. Hey, Dad. Hey, Uncle. I gotta tell you about. What's this crap? Oh, oh, this. It's a spear. You take a small pointy rock and you put it. Biggest rock is best rock. Sometimes, sometimes small rock is good rock. <sighs> Don't give me your liberal bullshit. A anyway, Dad, I want to tell you about. You know what else is wrong with your generation? The moment you get a new tool, you forget how to do anything. Cave paintings? Huh? Cave paintings tell me which meat is best meat. Biggest meat is best meat. Dad, I'm perfectly aware biggest meat is best meat, but we store the information on the wall for other people. Yeah, and then you stop storing it in your brain. I don't need to. It's permanently on the wall. Biggest brain is best brain. Stop that. And then there's fire. Ugh, don't even get me started on fire. Guys, it's really important that- You know, in my day, you'd catch a tiger, stare at it until it died of terror, and eat its face in one bite. And everyone appreciates your service during Tiger War too. but with fire, we can cook the meat. Then it lasts longer and it digests more readily. Oh my god! I knew we should never have sent you to cave grad school. They teach you these weird social rules. I should never have listened to your mother, or second mother, or concubines one, two, four, and seven. I have a wife now. What? How much does she weigh? Who cares? My generation isn't hung up on appearances. Biggest wife is best wife! How could you not tell me about her? Her name is Gorblarg. <gasps> Gorblarg? That's a tribe of eagle and goat name. We're hyena and bad people? That's racist. Whoa, whoa. Some of my best friends are tribe of eagle and goat people. And they're great athletes. Okay, that's it. I'm sorry that my generation is more intelligent, tech-savvy, and tolerant. Forgive me! I'll see you at Cave Christmas. Go have sex with an adult female, you queer! <laughs> nice one. And welcome back to another episode of Non Habeas Corpus, the only game show where you don't know what the questions are or when the show ends. <laughs> Let's meet our contestants one more time. Contestant one, you ran a grocery store and were picked up in a war zone for having a scary name. Yes, sir. Question one, what will convince us that you're not a threat to national security? I'll tell you anything. Wrong. <laughs> oh, Bob. Tell him what he wins. Noise! <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same prize. But never at the same time. Contestant two. Hi. Tell us about yourself. I'm a farmer from Yemen. Tell us about yourself in a way that's actionable to the intelligence community. I don't know what that means. <laughs> You know what that noise means? It's a hose round! <laughs> Why? Because if the punishments were consistent, you'd take longer to crack. <laughs> Question one, what do I want to hear? I don't know! Sorry. Wrong again. Bob, what does he win? A towel of water! Oh! <laughs> Goes against the Geneva Convention. <laughs> Geneva, take your medicine, or we'll extradite you. <laughs> All right, contestant three. Contestant three is dead. You accidentally killed him. Oh, contestant one, win some noise. <laughs> Back 
to you, contestant one. Let's see what's on the board. <gasps> a nail! <laughs> All right, question three. Who is the enemy? Uh, there's, there's this guy. Yes? Uh, Sheik Abu Shmabu. <gasps> he sounds evil. If you get me a map, I'll tell you his location. That's correct! <laughs> you win! Bob, what does he win? Food! <laughs> Congratulations! You win! And everyone will get a chance to win next week on another episode of Non Habeas Corpus. <laughs> hey, where's contestant two? No such person. Hey, programs, it's time the NSA got crackerjacked. You ready to get squishy with the Pico Bites? Squishy to the Mexidrome. Logging in. And the DDOS is Linuxing. And Linuxing. And nothing. Linux harder. Try and reverse cache dump the Unix Bites. No dice. My mole at the Fed says the Unix Bites are all hot pocketed. There's no way to jailbreak a hot pocketed Unix Bite. Negatory. You can decloak the Unix bytes with a concatenated what loop if you have enough RAM floppies. He's right. Seconded. Let's bejazzle these noobs. Punch that chicken! Bad news, everyone. FBI, you're all under arrest. I don't even know what Unix bytes are. CIA. I think Unix bytes are the little tiny boxes where they store the zeros and ones. Department of Homeland Security. I, um, I think computers only stores the ones in the Unix bytes. That's why they're called Unix bytes. You're like, mm, like, like, like one. The zeros are stored at Xerox. Yeah, I'm NSA. I've been speaking gibberish this entire time, and I was wondering why none of you had said anything about it. Uh, Vajazzle is definitely not a computer term. No, that, that, that one's for real. Yeah, my wife vajazzles and she's Microsoft certified. If we're all feds, then what was being hacked? We're locked in. <gasps> Hello, National Security. I'm the one who hacked all of you into that room. How? Do any of you remember getting a call from someone who said he was the president? Yeah, yes, yeah, that was the president. I was honored. Yeah. Did it sound like the president? No, no not very no, much at all. No. Was there laughter in the background? I thought it was the vice president. Jesus. Why did you trick us into coming here? For your own good. Until you really understand what hacking is, you won't be able to stop it. Um, I think we understand criminals. Thanks. <laughs> hey guys, it's the county credit card inspector. Can I get your numbers? Oh, oh yes, yeah. Four one two. I have two cards. Seven one nine. There is no credit card inspector. Then explain who's been draining my bank account for the last six months. You all employ programmers. How do you keep falling for stupid tricks? Well, our programmers are busy spying on civilians and building autonomous flying guns. Right. I mean, there's a different way to make the world better. Okay, lesson one. Computer viruses can be fixed by feeding your motherboard chicken soup. Mm. Oh, because it's a virus. Lesson two. All data is magnetic. So if you want to get the data quickly, absorb it with a powerful magnet. Genius! How do they uh, work? Science! Do fridge magnets work? Lesson three. Electric systems have a limited amount of energy, so if you hold hands and then stick a wet finger in a socket long enough, you can discharge it. Guys, we can crack the door! Make sure to tell everyone back at your agency about the trick. You bet I will. My people, my people, the day has come. On this day, I must pass on my crown and retire to my family grave. But before I go, I must be sure that my kingdom will still be safe and as the Lord 
has given no sign. It is left to us mortals to determine our own fate. But how? My liege, what if individuals were allowed to, let's just make up a word, vote and select representatives of their own choosing? A wonderful idea. A proclamation, henceforth, all serfs shall be set free. All leaders will be chosen by the people and- Wait. I totally pulled this sword out of a stone. What? Yeah, yanked it right out. Was it hard to yank out? Pretty hard, yeah. No, that's, no, 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 that's just some crazy man. My leash, if you want a representative system, you have to truly believe in the nobility of the human spirit. Sword. The kingdom is saved. Yeah! No, no, this is madness. What experience do you have for governing? The sword is a metaphor for the people, and I yanked on the... It was really hard to pull the sword out of the stone, and I... Who's this guy? Can I stab him? I may not have mentioned this, but I have a giant sword. He has no legislative experience, no diplomatic credentials, nothing! He does have a big-ass sword, and it was in a rock. I... I can really see both arguments here. Any man can hold a sword. You need a man that can hold truth and empathy. And fireballs. And fireballs, what? I just killed a dragon with magic. King me. There's no such thing. Magic or dragons? Yes. Oh, I cannot decide. So I must do as Solomon did. Bring me a baby to split in half. First guy to split it gets to be king. Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea. That's horrible. It's gonna be way easier for the sword guy. Oh, so he can kill dragons, but he can't burn babies in half? Doesn't sound like king material to me. How about we burn witches? Guy with least burn witches loses. Pretty sure this thing lights on fire during battle, so that works for me. King, that's the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, witches, they're not real, they're women. I think you're confusing witches with children. Does cutting a burning witch in half count as two burning witches or one? Obviously one. What if they grow a new head? One and a half? My lord, they have failed your test. Only I was unwilling to cleave an infant into meat. What? We chop up peasant babies every Friday. Why should I elect you king for being lazy? But, ah, uh, you know, it's been like three hours since I dallied with one of my child brides. You know, let's just wrap this whole thing up. How about a nice, traditional fight to the death? My lord, I weep for my kingdom. I weep for us all. Ah, son of a... Ah. Shut up, baby. That doesn't count. Perhaps we can finally upgrade our communication systems enough that I can report my pointless existence to some place who can program me to self-destruct. I could use my powers to get humans to worship you. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Leva! Neacombra! For attempting to bring back God, we sentence you to death! Orgasming! Maybe we should uh, store all of the information we have. Orgasming! Orgasming.